A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, let love be sincere. Hate what is evil, hold on to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Anticipate one another in showing honor. Do not grow slack in zeal, be fervent in faith, serve the Lord. Above all, rejoice in hope, endure in affliction, persevere in prayer. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When Jesus was asked where the reign of God was to be found, he simply responded that the reign of God is in our midst. In other words, it's in the midst of our families, our parish community, our neighborhood, and our world. And most especially, the reign of God is in the midst of the web of relationships we encounter in our daily lives. Relationships where people are drawn to be holy, where people labor for the sake of justice, where joy permeates whatever they are doing or experiencing together. Mary, after her encounter with the Archangel Gabriel, chooses to risk everything in order to be a part of the reign of God. She realizes that God's favor is not only for her, but for all God's people. And so she responds to God's invitation to holiness with faith, and in response to her fiat, God fills her with extraordinary joy. Immediately upon Gabriel's departure, Mary embarks on an arduous journey of compassion in order to assist her elderly cousin Elizabeth. Carrying the child in her womb, she also ha bears great joy to share with Elizabeth. And that joy, that joy explodes wide open the moment they greet one another in the courtyard. A simple encounter of two relatives triggers a wealth of joy. I always say to people, if ever you want to find joy, I encourage you to look for it in the simplest ways and in the simplest things. Like the unexpected expression of gratitude from someone you don't know, and you didn't even remember what you did for them. You smiling at someone and suddenly and automatically receiving a smile in return or watching people greeting one another at an airport. I love to watch people waiting for someone coming off a plane and to see the excitement and the joy that emanates from them once they embrace. Joy can come, can come unexpectedly. It can appear without explanation as the puzzled pieces of our lives suddenly come together and the mystery is revealed. Wherever there is joy, the reign of God is growing in the midst of it, I guarantee you. And one thing is for cer certain, joy always, always accompanies our inner freedom. Whenever we choose the good, we experience freedom, and joy always follows. What limits our inner freedom? Number one, fear. Fear of losing something we think we must hold on to. Fear of trying something new when the old feels comfortable and safe. Fear of looking foolish or failing when our own limitations are so obvious. Fear of appearing foolish, losing our dignity, losing prestige, losing power, failing or being rejected. All these contribute to limiting our freedom to rejoice. Add to that the fear of not feeling as if we're good enough, not holy enough, 
not being worthy even causes us to distance ourselves from what we truly desire. And what we truly desire, believe it or not, is to love and to be loved. Whenever we come to believe that God smiles on us as we are, with all our goodness and, yes, our sins, then joy has room to enter. God's love for us does not depend on who we are, but on the simple fact, and I know this is hard to believe, that we exist. To know who we are and to embrace who we are as loved by God is true humility. Mary knew God's regard for her. That was all she needed. She was free to risk all for God because she could risk being regarded unfavorably by others. In her humility, Mary embraced the truth of her lowliness and found God's presence was the joy that she needed. The need for security is deep in every human heart. But in this upside down reign of God, security can really be a dangerous desire. Those who seek the kingdom of God first with faith and goodwill find healing and joy in God's presence. And so we pray, Mary, our mother of perpetual help, help us to recognize God's presence in our midst, in the people we encounter, and to see God's favor resting on us in the events of our everyday life. Mary, share your joy with us as you did with Elizabeth so that we can share it with others.